Hi, if you've already watched one of my other core practical videos, I'm really glad you found it useful enough to click play on this one. But you can skip the first minute, so scroll along. If you haven't zoomed forward, welcome to this core practical video. It's part of a series of videos which I'm hoping will help you to focus on each of the Edexcel Physics GCSE core practicals. For double science students, you only need seven out of the eight, so please skip number four, thermal energy. This is only for the triple scientists. Triples, you need all eight. Assessment of practical work is included as part of the final exams. A minimum of 15% of the total marks must be allocated to questions related to these core practicals. So, I hope you find the video useful and I hope it helps you to revise the experiment that you will have done in your lessons. The fifth core practical has two parts. In part A, you're to construct electrical circuits to investigate the relationship between potential difference, current and resistance for a resistor and a filament lamp. In part B, you're to construct electrical circuits to test series and parallel circuits using resistors and filament lamps. Edexcel described this investigation to involve constructing a circuit to investigate potential difference, current and resistance for a resistor and a filament lamp. The behaviour of parallel and series circuits must also be included and this must be done using filament lamps. A series circuit should be set up initially with a resistor, an ammeter and a voltmeter. The current must be recorded at different voltages. This must then be repeated using a filament lamp instead of a resistor. To investigate series and parallel circuits, a parallel circuit must be set up with ammeters, voltmeters and filament lamps. Readings from this circuit must then be compared with the series circuits used initially. Analysis must include the use of the equation V equals I times R. There are a lot of little experiments in this core practical, and so this could potentially be a very long video. Therefore, I'm going to divide it into two parts. This video is part A, and we'll look at the experiments for resistance of a fixed resistor and a filament lamp. So here's a little video of me setting up the circuit. I am using an ammeter and a voltmeter. And for the first experiment, a 100 ohm resistor. And you can see I've got a power pack ready too. So I'm going to connect up the circuit by connecting the ammeter in series with the resistor. So I'm going from the positive terminal of my power supply to the positive side of my ammeter. I'm then going from my ammeter to the resistor so I can measure the current that's flowing through the resistor. I then connect and make a complete path by going from the other side of my resistor back to the power supply. So there's my series circuit, my complete path, the current flowing through the resistor. For the voltage, I have my voltmeter and I get that ready. And I put that in parallel with the resistor, across the resistor, so I can measure the potential difference or the voltage. There we go, all connected and ready to go. You might have noticed that when I was setting up, the power pack was set on 12 volts. That's because I'd used it on the refraction experiment the other day. Never start on a really high voltage. You tend to just blow components. So start low and then work up. I'm starting on 3 volts because lower than that and the current was too low to be detected by my ammeter. For each reading, I switched on and took the measurements immediately. I wanted to control the temperature the best I could. And the longer the current flows for, the warmer the resistor will get. I also allow time in between the readings for the resistor to cool down. And to make use of this time, I plot my graph. Keen observers among you may have noticed that I haven't plotted my independent variable, the voltage, what I'm changing, on the x-axis. Perhaps you can work out why I'm doing my graph the wrong way round. 
For the next reading, I used the power supply to change the voltage across the resistor. I increased the power supply voltage to 4 volts. And then I add the point to my graph. Increase the voltage on the power supply by 1 volt each time. And I keep on plotting the points on my graph as I go. I can see anomalies immediately and I will go back and check them at the end. My final result is taken at 10 volts because I think I have enough points to see a pattern. Then I go back and I check my anomalies by repeating a couple of the readings so I know which ones to ignore. I've placed my ruler in what looks like my line of best fit. But I know that at zero volts there would be zero current. So with that being a definite result, I draw my line of best fit through zero, zero. So have you worked out why I went for current on the x-axis and the potential difference or the voltage on the y-axis? Because of Ohm's law. Voltage is equal to the current times the resistance, V equals IR. And so rearranged, we know that resistance can be calculated by doing the voltage divided by the current. With my axes this way round, I can find the resistance of my fixed resistor using the gradient of my graph. The gradient doesn't change because the resistance is fixed. It doesn't change. My experimental results are pretty close to the true value here. I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you two different fixed resistors. So I repeated the experiment with a 220 ohm fixed resistor. The higher resistance makes it harder for the current to flow through this resistor. So my first reading was taken at 5 volts on the power supply. I used exactly the same method though, increasing the power supply by 1 volt each time, taking the readings as soon as I'd switched on and allowing time for the equipment to cool in between readings. I took my final result at 13 volts on the power supply. I plotted my results on the same graph here to show you the two resistors compared. Notice the steeper gradient for the higher resistor. In both graphs we can see that as the voltage increases, the current increases proportionally. The resistance is fixed, it doesn't change for the constant temperature for both of the resistors. The data from my second experiment was not as reliable as the data from my first, being 30 ohms out here. I should really do three repeats and average the results, but it's the summer holidays and these videos are taking me longer than I'd planned, so I think this is good enough to help you revise. So next, the filament lamp goes into the circuit. I'm starting as low as possible on the power supply now at 1 volt, and I'm going to stop at 8 volts because I don't want to blow the bulb. As before, I increase in 1 voltage steps on the power supply, immediately reading the current and the voltage from the ammeter and the voltmeter to get the current through the bulb and the voltage across it and I allow time to cool in between the readings. I plotted my graph in between readings as before and you can see a different shape, no straight line. This curve shows us that the resistance is changing. I used the points from my line of best fit to calculate the resistance at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 volts. You can see that as the potential difference increases, the resistance increases too. I'm using my ruler here to try and help you see the gradient of my current voltage graph. As the voltage increases, and that's the voltage across the filament lamp, the current through the filament lamp is also increasing, and we saw that the bulb got brighter. 
but the current and the voltage are not proportionally related. We've got a curved line rather than a straight line. We can see the gradient is getting steeper and steeper because as the voltage increases, the resistance of the filament lamp increases. Now, if I plotted my graph with the independent variable, the voltage, on the x-axis, the voltage current graph would have a different shape. Still a curve, but a curve like this. So, look really carefully in exam questions at which way round the axes are. I still find the same resistance values at 1 to 6 volts from both of my graphs from the line of best fit because I'm still doing voltage divided by current as my calculation for each point. As the potential difference increases, the resistance increases. As the potential difference increases, the current increases, but not proportionally. Just watch those axes. Whew, well that's part A done. Have a break, but please do come back and watch part B, because otherwise you won't have completed your core practical revision for core practical 5. And you know that. Regular, Regular review gets a better grade for, for you. you. Don't forget to like so that I can keep making the videos. Comment. Especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe. So you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. <laughs> <laughs>